here I would find myself initially with a group. A group of new friends, I would say. The exact identities were unknown, but you tend to not consider those around you that are known to you. And if you are connected more so with your real awareness, then it is really only the personal self that must consider this, ponder that, and concern itself over the individuals who were with you on the real side. Usually on waking too, do you consider such, when your personal self more so comes to bear? My group and I spent a considerable portion of the real side experience taking it in turns to practice abilities, predominantly this teleporting ability that seems to be featuring in my dreams of late. Originally, it was a skill I would utilise myself. But in recent real side experiences, I and others are practising the art of teleporting not just ourselves, but entire groups of people all over creation on the real side seems to be something that is considered important to a master, although everything is, and from that real self-consideration, there is no space and time, so we, in fact, do not travel anywhere. In creation, however, everything is subject to cause and effect, that produces the experiences that we have. These experiences then come in sequences of events, based on what we decide, choose, agree with, and activate with the faculties of our experience generating creational vehicles. Regardless of how aware someone may be, or even if they recognise the is and stand real with it in creation, if they have a vehicle in creation, or like a guide, they choose to have a functioning vehicle for their is sharing purposes as it is in creation then, the assumption of the vehicle is subject to cause and effect sequences of created experience, and so will experience what seems to be space and time. So while having a creational vehicle, it is perhaps prudent to practice ability that allows superior motion for whatever reasons, as the simulator continues to deteriorate. Perhaps the translocation, teleportation through the life levels, will be the key to survival, to perhaps allow enough time to get the recognition and being with the is done, as in a few real side dreams I've had, where we are removing ourselves from the lower collapsing creational life levels, and positioning ourselves in safer, higher life level positions, to afford us more time, to get the recognition of the is completed, that we can extricate ourselves from a simulator implosion before being caught in it. 
The next part of the dream had the group and I out in an open area. Nothing very remarkable about this, except that I did recognize one of the group individuals. It was Sandy Staling, and this was the first time I'd ever seen Sandy on the real side. It was a sunny day, and as in most scenes, Shadow was cast upon the ground, according to whatever is blocking the sun and affording shade. Sandy would then inform my group and I that we must not stand in the sun. We must remain in the shadows only. On the real side, you can determine the authenticity of an individual. Your real self can recognize if you are dealing with the genuine individual or if it is a clever ruse, a deception, a dark force replication. The authentic individual, if they are aware new friends, the guides, or Dwayne, or whoever, will have a certain signature to them, as I have mentioned before, that can't be faked, and any attempt to do so will be easily identified, as the controllers always produce flawed replicas with tell-tale indicators and mannerisms that they are not the aware and connected to real self beings they on the surface appear to be. But yes, this was the real Sandy. She had passed the real self scanner, and so her warning must have been as genuine as she. At first I would ponder that this was her revealing information about perhaps some new dastardly controller scheme that not only are we dealing with chemtrails, nanotechnology, GMO, Wi-Fi and 5G, but something new and sunlight related. Perhaps they are adding something to the very structure of the sun, that the sunlight is somehow tainted and may soon be or is causing harm. We have heard of how they are firing missiles into the sun. We have heard rumours of how they are trying to replace the sun with an artificial one. Perhaps this has or is having an effect on the very light photons we are exposed to. We also hear of how the light particles are intrinsic to the very fabric of the holographic creational physical life vehicle. How the information in the light photons carries a complete database of species, and according to the receiver, that is DNA, dictates how the photons are then transmitted into the holographic form that the DNA houses as its template. Perhaps then a disruption in the sun's photons or the removal of the sun altogether will result in the species holograms no longer able to be formed perhaps far easier then to be transitioned into a virtual AI technological pseudo-reality. 
they also are very much demonizing the sun as they are promoting their climate change propaganda. They are garnering agreement to bring about the changes, the experiences overall that they wish to see exacted in the collective human experience. With enough agreement that the sun is a detrimental thing and that creation is shaped and moulded according to what people decide, is it possible that enough anti-sun agreement has or will give experiential rise to the sun somehow becoming tainted in some way, that the photons will become harmful in some shape or form. I've seen a few movies lately where the theme was along these lines, where everybody was suddenly unable to step out into the sunlight. They had to remain within buildings, or they literally exploded. As we know, movies are documentaries, or what they contain is that which the controllers wish to see implemented in everyone's experience through predictive programming, programming people to agree to the experience that the movies present. The demonizing of the sun then is being programmed subconsciously as much as the other themes and restricting notions the reptilians wish to take root. So perhaps Sandy's warning was along these lines that the sun may become just as harmful as 5G, as the deteriorating agreed upon human experience continues. One other possibility occurred. When we speak in terms of light, in regards to references beyond the literal interpretation, we would be referring to the true light of the ears, or the light of knowledge, the reflected light of the astral. The astral light of knowledge and the Akashic causal files of recorded lifetimes in creation. As we know, knowledge is one thing, but the knowledge alone won't get you into the real universes, as it's all about recognition. And knowledge can be chased forever in the psych realms, and can be a, tra a tap lining trap if we become emotionally invested in the knowledge, especially if it pertains to the reptilians and their dastardly and astral emotional baiting activities. And the fact that the Akashic records are not completely reliable as the universal files of these are, that they can be tampered with as they fall under the, the dominion of the Callum God. Perhaps in these last Iron Epoch moments, the Akashic records are made more unreliable. Maybe the distortion the blackness of unawareness is affecting even these. For if the simulator is imploding, this must incorporate all levels of it and all that these levels contain. As I have seen what seems to be a weakening of the veil 
between the astral and the physical on a few out-of-body excursions, with the lower astral entities drawing nearer and potentially crossing over. As things continue to fragment, it stands to reason that perhaps the life level where the Akashic records are stored, the causal body, is equally suffering affliction of a kind. A little like setting fire to a library of books. The information is going to be less readable now, less reliable. Perhaps then Sandy's warning was of the light of knowledge as it pertains to the Akashic records, that these ought be disregarded now, and maybe not even reliable as references. For if someone is very much of their personal self, with no connection to the real awareness, and their references are being altered, callum tampered with, or somehow disrupted, then we may well suddenly have memories and references that are inaccurate. And if we take great stock in these, as unaware individuals may do, if they perhaps are interested in past life regressions, for example, then they may make self-convinced assumptions based on faulty information. And if the personal self is the sum of its experiences, its created consciousness is based on the experiences stored in the causal vehicle, like files on a computer, then if the files are damaged or disrupted, then this must have a bearing on the created consciousness, like ripples in a pond. Perhaps then, at the end of the final epoch, this is part of the implosion, that of the personal self going crazy, going off the rails. For if the restriction and demise is affecting all life levels and the causal files that make up the created consciousness are also deteriorating, then this must result in very unkiltered and deranged consciousnesses indeed. Perhaps as is generally depicted in ancient writings, how at the end times there always seems to be madness, murders in the street, brother killing brother and all that. Maybe for those who are clinging onto their personal self and personal life only can expect that as the simulator reaches its final phases of demise, that they will descend into madness, a distorted created consciousness that is based on a distorted, deteriorating file of lifetime references and experiences. For all the peoples connecting with their real awareness, as we know, anything that befalls the personal self-creational vehicles has nothing to do with the real awareness. And so, yes, aware peoples may still experience their personal selves going a bit crazy too, but they have the connection to their real selves, and so from this objective position, they will be able to deal with these tumultuous end times, and the deteriorating personal self more effectively, 
better than those fully immersed in their personal created self and thinking that that is who they are. Those with real awareness and the connection to the ears, those standing real in the new nowness, are standing in a position in creation that supersedes the limitations and the various adverse variables afflicting the personal self. So perhaps this was the nature of the message Sandy was conveying to my group and I, a heads up of extra features and elements that will feature in the deterioration of the simulator we will be shortly experiencing. Amazing, Kevin. Yes, uh, that's a lot of fun how you explain all that. Very, very well done. Uh, so many viewpoints for people to consider. And yes, things are happening with the atmosphere and the sun, of course. And I can tell here where I'm at in Huntington Beach that the sun is uh, burning. And that means the ozone is gone. And yes, I've seen on the real side, too, uh, that they are projecting things into the sun. They're playing around uh, because they see what we're doing, like in uh, Pierce's experience and others uh, that dealing with. Uh, and they don't like it. So the idea is, is that if they can't have it, uh, no one can. And so they're rapidly destroying and poisoning everything uh, as uh, we're going along here. So yes, it's real time to wake up. Again, there is no La La Land here. It is all about survival and uh, paying attention to what's real and these personal things uh, in this world. Well, uh, they're going to come and go as they always have. So, uh, you know, again, uh, learn to recognize your intent, learn to recognize this reality, uh, etc. Because, yes, it's all really happening in creation. And uh, these individuals, they do not care. They don't even care about themselves. And so this is just how they are. And to um, get to them, to understand this, well, that's, you know, we try many different ways, but for the most part, we got to put them in the phantom zone, etc., to displace them, to get them out of the way for what we're trying to do. But again, there's a whole lot going on, especially here in the personal self. So yeah, those that are here uh, and anyone else listening, lucky you if you are, because again, um, many people are looking for some, some uh, you know, great prophecy to happen or Jesus returning or whatever. It's not going to happen. Uh, this is very real. We're making the decisions. We have to become more aware.